Hi everyone, it's been a big year um, and we're at the end of it and that's okay. It's actually a great time of the year and the reason why for me it's a great time of the year is that it's a time where we pause, we reflect and we remember and we discover more about God sending his son Jesus Christ to earth. Now let's, before we start, let's just pray and commit this time. Father, we thank you for sending your son um, born into humanity, born in Bethlehem, born in the mess and the chaos of just normal life. And Lord, we thank you that he came and he came, Lord, to reveal you to us and to reveal your love, to reveal um, how much you love us and how much you desire for us to be in relationship with you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the reason for the season, that Jesus came to save. And, you know, uh, I love the title because it says, wise men still seek him. It's a play on words, but, you know, wise people still seek him. They still seek God and who he is. Because at the end of the day, we're all travelers. We're all on a journey together. And we're all asking at different times, I believe, the big questions of life. You know, why am I here? What's my purpose? Who am I? Why was it I that was born? Why do I look like this? Why am I different? Why am I unique? Big questions in life. And I know that I asked those questions myself in life. I asked those questions about, I remember talking to my parents, asking about why am I the way I am? Why was it me who was born? Um, very hard to answer uh, a little child and to go into those details. But I guess... For me, let's um, put it and reframe it differently another way. Remember the game hide and seek. And I still play it very occasionally with our children, but I know that they often play it together. And kids, if you're watching, I know it's a game that you love and it's been around for a long time, hide and seek. And what often happens is that you put your hands over your eyes or you close your eyes, no peeping, and you count to 20 and people are running everywhere trying to find somewhere very quickly to hide while well, you're going one two three and some where are they i don't know but then you go find them and there's lots of adventure in the seeking in the searching out in the finding you know because it's as we seek as we uh, find people our questions become answered like where are they and it's also our wondering becomes realized you know we might be thinking where they are but maybe they're not there but as we find them, we realize that's where they are. And if we can pause for a moment, let's reimagine this game is very different. Let's reimagine that actually we cover our eyes, we count the 20, one, two, three, and then we just wonder where they are. You know, behind the couch, under the bed, I wonder if they're under the bed, I wonder if they're in the garage. I wonder if they're in the cupboard. I wonder if they're on the roof. Who knows where they could be? And then we just stop and then we just finish and we continue on our day or wherever we are. But we haven't entered into the quest for discovery. That wouldn't be, a, it'd be boring, wouldn't it? But we haven't answered those questions or, or our wonders haven't become realized. But what I love is that God has a great promise for us. He says in Jeremiah 29, 13, that if you look for me wholeheartedly, if you look for me with the genuineness from your heart, and you will find me, there's a promise there, you will find, because God desires to be discovered. He desires for us to come into relationship with him. And it's about wholeheartedly finding God, because he found me. I remember um, that I've been on this journey. I've asked those questions in life and I went on that quest to discover more. Well, how do we do that? Like what signs do we look for? What are we discovering, you know? And there's some great clues in the story of the wise men about this. Because firstly, it was the star. They saw the star in the sky and they followed the star because they felt that there was something that was special that was happening and they wanted to find out the something special. And so they followed the star to find out what that special was. And there's a great passage that enables us to see that actually what we see is really important. 
in Romans 1, verse 20, it says, For God's invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, because God is invisible, he is, has got great attributes about him, but what do they look like? Well, we can discover that because his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the beginning, since the creation of the world and being understood through what he has made. So as we gaze up at the night sky and the stars and the planets and how they're aligned, as we look at the moon, as the creation around us, we get to discover the, the bigness and the greatness of this amazing God. He's huge of what he has created and made. And it's in that discovery, we, um, it's another sign for us, another step to pursue the creator and have relationship with this person. But there's another clue along the way, which I think is really important. And that clue, actually, the wise men, when they came to Jerusalem, had a conversation with Herod, who's the ruler of the region at the time. And they asked about, you know, they've been following this star and they would like to know where this king was to be born. Herod was like, hang on, I'm the ruler here. Um, there's not gonna be another. And who are you talking about? So what he did, was he invited the chief priests of the time, like the senior ministers, and he also invited the scribes, those that would write down and take very good notes, as it were, note for note, word for word, of the Bible. He invited them in, and he said to them, where is this king you know, to be born? Is there anything that you know about this these wise men have come. They think there's someone around because of the star they've been following. Their response was actually, they said, well, look, our, the prophet Micah, he said this, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. That's in Micah. So it's great here, but there's two clues that the wise men give us to look around us, to see the beauty of the world, to look in the word, because in there you'll discover more about who God is. And in the Gospels in particular, they're full of knowing who God is through Jesus Christ. But it's when we go and seek that we discover that the answer behind those big questions, you know, we can put our, uh, close our eyes and go, um, what is the purpose of life? Why am I here? And we can think about it, then we can just wander and just keep on our way. We could be distracted, we could be busy. Uh, we might just say no. Or we could go on the journey of discovery, just like the wise men did. And as we do that wholeheartedly, God will be found. So my prayer is that wherever you are on that journey, um, you may not have started because maybe at this point you're saying no. My prayer is that you'll open up your heart and mind to start that journey of discovery. It might be that you are still on the way and wondering, well, how do I know more? What do I look for to find God and him to find me? Well, we can start as the wise men did by looking around us and in awe and wonder and amazement. And then look at God's word, the Bible, and see for ourselves and dig deeper into what God has said. Open up our minds and hearts. And as we do that, I believe we'll come to that point where God will say, you are found. Because he desires to have a relationship with us. And as the wise men entered Bethlehem, as they came to Jesus, into that family, into their place where they were, into their home, they worshipped him. It became a realisation for them. The star they followed the sign, led them to Jesus the King. And may that be our response as well, that as we journey and as we discover that when we see Jesus in our discovery, that we worship him as King, that we have found the Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And that is our Christmas. Christmas is a time when our Saviour has come. He is Christ the Lord. And I pray that he'll be Lord of your life as he is of mine. May Jesus come again very soon. 
Merry Christmas, everyone, and have a great holiday New Year.